What's up guys, Terry here for Rev3 Games and the day is finally upon us. I am of course referring to Darksiders 2 Day, which has been in the making for a couple years now. Uh, if you didn't play the first Darksiders, really fun, super great game. Didn't really sell all that well, so Vigil's really trying to ramp things up for the sequel by keeping the same combat and puzzle elements that made the first game so fun and adding in new features, new environments, and some interesting characters. Darksiders 2 picks up where the first game left off, after War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, has accidentally destroyed all of mankind. It's totally not his fault though, and his brother Death, one of the other four horsemen, knows that. So he takes main stage in Darksiders 2 with a goal of restoring humanity and clearing his brother's name. He is innocent. I never said he wasn't. Now if you're not familiar with the series at all, it's an action-adventure RPG with a little bit of everything thrown in. The universe is divided up into four realms, and while it's technically open world, once you enter a realm, there's a pretty specific pattern of events. The basic formula for these events is solve a puzzle, beat a mini boss, solve another puzzle, beat another mini boss, and repeat that cycle until you get to a big boss. Obviously things get a little more complex as you progress through the game, but the general outline of your objectives is usually similar. Vigil made efforts to counteract that occasional linearity by adding tons of collectibles, hidden loot chests, and side quests scattered around to keep players interested, as well as a fast travel option to open the world up a little bit more. Speaking of the world, it looks so much better. The visuals are gorgeous and there's a lot more color and brightness in the environments, which contrasts nicely when you go visit Earth later in the game, only to find a barren post-apocalyptic wasteland. In addition to the visual upgrade, the environments are also much bigger, which means a lot more climbing and jumping. Death can scale walls, climb beams, and use zip lines to get around, and honing these skills is both fun and necessary to solving many of the game's puzzles. As you progress, you'll find yourself with an even larger library of skills, like the Voidwalker ability, which lets you create and move through portals. And while the mechanics may not be that different from those in the first game, they certainly feel different thanks to the bigger environments and Death's many supernatural abilities. To go along with the standard set of abilities is a skill tree offering players two specializations. The Necromancer, which features mostly arcane skills like Murder, which releases a murder of crows to steal health from your foes as well as a Harbinger skill tree, which is the more warrior-focused of the two, and most of its skills are related to the Teleport Slash ability, which teleports you through enemies, causing a ton of damage. You can also mix and match the two skill trees. For example, I chose to go the Harbinger route, but I just couldn't live with myself if I didn't at least try that Murder of Crows ability, and I'm really glad I did, because those crows are angry and hungry, and it is awesome. One thing they've added that's completely new to the game is a loot system, and Vigil did a great job of making it just comprehensive enough without being overwhelming. Enemies always drop gold and either one weapon or piece of armor. There's no weapon crafting system of any kind, but there are occasional rare possessed items you can find that you can upgrade by sacrificing other items. Of course, you can also buy and sell just about everything at vendors, which are located in almost every major city. Death's primary weapon of choice is a pair of scythes that's pretty much non-negotiable. You don't really have a choice in that, but there is a sizable array of secondary weapons to choose from, including maces, hammers, claws, gauntlets, even a pistol, which you have no choice but to use at certain points of the game. Those weapons, when used in combination with Death's abilities, made the combat in Darksiders 2 nothing short of incredibly satisfying. Every move you make feels productive, and when you string them all together to create combos, well, then you finally understand why they call him Death. Suffice it to say, I had no problems with the game's combat. I thought both the smaller enemies and the big boss fights provided an interesting but fair challenge. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the level design, which started out great, but near the end of my playthrough, about 20 hours in, led to some really frustrating puzzle solving. And the problem isn't even the puzzles themselves, it's that the sheer size of the levels containing them is so big that it's literally impossible to see everything you need to see in order to solve a puzzle. To make matters worse, solving it often boils down to simply noticing something small nearby, like a hidden passageway, or an area of the wall you can climb on, or a portal above your head. Death has a pet crow, Dust, whose sole purpose in life is to show you where you're supposed to go, and even he's unreliable from time to time. The convoluted map layout does nothing to help you orient yourself either, which ultimately translates into a lot of getting lost and a lot of backtracking. The most frustrating part, however, is that these problems could have easily been mitigated by adding a primary objective point to your local map system, but Vigil didn't include that, not even in easy mode, which is a severe oversight in my opinion. Frustrations aside though, I sincerely enjoyed my time with Darksiders 2. It's the kind of game where once you start playing, you just don't want to stop. 
Its replay value is also enhanced by the addition of a New Game Plus mode, which lets you transfer all your stats and equipments over to a new game. There's also a Nightmare mode with permadeath that unlocks when you beat the full game, as well as a 100-round wave-based survival mode called The Crucible, which can prove quite lucrative if you play your cards right. Overall, I'd recommend Darksiders 2 to just about everyone. Its seamless blend of challenging puzzle play and in-depth combat makes it one of the most fun games I've played in recent memory, and there's enough extra content in there to keep you playing long after you've finished. Vigil has successfully managed to create a sequel that's worthy of not only its name, but also your money. So that's my review. Thank you guys for watching. We've got tons more content both here and over on youtube.com slash detoid. In fact, Max put up his review for Sleeping Dogs this morning, and I don't want to spoil anything just yet, but I hear there might be dogs in it. So check that out, and I'll see you guys next time.